Hello everyone, Zeno Zimmer here, and welcome back to our Let's Play Star Wars Quarter. And you might have noticed these aren't the steps we left off with. And I have a reason for that. Oh, I messed up. Number of wise, I messed up. Thankfully, it isn't too big of a mess up. I'm quite sure. So, this episode, and yes, I did change some things. So this episode, statement. we're going to restore request. Statement. As HP's you... memory. And now rewire the last three relays. Yes, good. Well done, Master. I believe your operation was a success. Accessing new memory. Access complete. I have accessed information on my owner prior to the Senator, Master. Most unexpected. What now? Answer. It appears that previous to my ownership by the Senator, I was the property of one Bochaba the Hutt on the planet Slaheron. So you were a gangster's assassin droid? Statement. So it appears, Master. A rather suitable occupation, would you not agree? Hmm. My memories tell me that, for a time, Bochaba was one of the most feared gangsters on Slaheron. I helped him with this reputation greatly. Over a span of one year, I terminated a grand total of 322 sentient meat bags. These contracts made Bochaba very wealthy. So what happened to stop that? It was unfortunate but inevitable that eventually Bochaba would overstep his bounds. I had just cleared two hut households when the exchange retaliated. Statement. I was not even present when my old master was assassinated. I did appreciate the artistry behind his demise upon my return, however. Why? How was he killed? Answer. Allow me to say that I have little doubt that residents of that sector were fishing pieces of bochaba out of their soup for weeks afterward. At any rate, I quickly shut down upon my master's death. The rival hut claimed me along with my master's other possessions. Observation. If that hut had only known my true function, he surely would not have sold me to a senator he bribed regularly. You would have been found out eventually. Observation. No doubt, master. It would have been a glorious battle to end my existence with. I would prefer that to rusting on a junk heap. Do you remember anything else? Answer. Negative, Master. There is still more memory that can be restored, however, if you wish to try. As well, I believe I can restore several programs the Hut installed to improve my performance. Yes, they are now active, contemplative. I wonder how many more dead Masters I might have out there. A droid can live for a long time, you know. And he gets a regeneration ability. Statement. Is restored more memory? And now rewire the la access complete. I have recovered the last of my deleted memory, Master. Unfortunately, my history is still not complete. What? Why not? Answer. As I did inform you, Master, the majority of my memory is still locked within my core. That can only be accessed by the appropriate stimuli. And I have no idea what that stimuli might be, unfortunately. Sadly, it seems my true origins will always be a mystery. Are you sure your core isn't damaged? Observation. If it was, Master, your restorations will certainly have ensured that the proper stimulus restores my core's functions. Sadly, that could have already happened and we missed it, and my core...
core was too damaged to activate. Oh, woe is me. You get when your origins are you? Query, wouldn't you be master? Here I am, surrounded by all these meat bags, and all I desire is true perfection. Surely there are more droids like me out there. Or is that too much to hope? Well, Objection. Oh, <laughs> fine. Laugh at me, master. Humiliate your pet droid. Go ahead. So tell me about your last owner. Correction. That would actually be my first owner, master. The first I can remember. I had completed an assassination in Mandalorian space. Though I have no knowledge of what my target was or who sent me. Regardless, my motor function had been damaged, and I could not return to wherever I had been sent from. A Mandalorian soldier claimed me as booty, I believe. He repaired me, poorly, I might add, and proceeded to use my assassination protocol to raise his rank. It appears no one could resist using your protocol. Query, do you not have enemies that you would desire eliminated, Master? If my protocol still worked, would you not use it? That's different. Statement. If you say so, Master. At any rate, it seems that my Mandalorian owner finally decided to send me against Mandalore himself. My poorest performance, sadly. Oh? Why is that? Answer. I was captured by this Mandalore during the attempt. He was able to reverse my programming and send me after my own master. It was quite distressing. There was little I could do. Needless to say, I dispatched the Mandalorian soldier efficiently. Once I deactivated, I believe I eventually ended up on the black market and was sold to the hut on Slaheron. <sighs> my darkest day. So, you couldn't kill Mandalore, hey? Statement. With all due respect, Master, he is the leader of the Mandalorians. Perhaps my old master was foolish to send me after him. You're just a traveling piece of bad luck, aren't you? Objection. That is so unfair, Master. Have I not brought you a great deal of satisfaction? You don't want to hear that answer. Like that. Statement. You are a very harsh master, master. I like you. <laughs> so can you remember anything else? Answer. There are a few Mandalorian implants that I can activate now. They will improve my performance. Beyond that, master, there is nothing more I can relate to you. With luck, we will discover the stimulus to unlock my core very soon. And because of that, he gains Another regeneration point. So now it's a region one vitality every three seconds. <laughs> and as we'll get to see. Yeah, what are you. Oh, yeah. Because of this. I haven't gone through enough of Juhani and. Uh, Kandaris' story. There were... So I will quickly do this right now, but it will oh, be. Okay, so I will try and get through Candorus's. Everyone else's is done. How may I... Well, they... They were so very alive. So full of hope and energy and zeal. In the retrospect, I can see it was a little bit tragic. Well, yes. These Jedi were going to fight the Mandalorians just after they had invaded. Many of those Jedi perished in the fighting, but to us, they seemed invincible. Don't believe we've seen this one. Especially their leader, who they talked about all the time. Paragons of light and justice sweeping away all iniquity before them. It was like looking at gods. Damn straight. Oh yeah, I have done I this one. What happened? But not. Yes, but but. I but. 
Yes. I... I never told you. I... If it... Wait. I... I... But... I... How may I... A rat hole for... You have no idea what it is like to have to live there for years. To walk down the streets. To have people look at you in disgust, like an animal. Most did not know anything about me. But it was there, all the same. Because I was an alien. Because I was different from them. Frightening. I doubt any of them had even seen my people before. So they persecuted me. They looked down on me and my family. Charged us more for food. Would not let us walk their streets. They spat on us. You are human. You could not possibly know. That is true, I suppose. But it is much more obvious for someone like me. There were no other Catherine Terrace. No one to talk to, no one to confide in. <laughs> but you must think me weak for saying this. But I am strong enough to admit it. I thank you for your concern, but... Uh, maybe I am weak. To think that some stories of my stupid past could possibly interest you. I thank you. You are kinder than I would have expected to put up with me using you in this way. I hope that I will not use your time so badly in the future. Thank you. How may I... Okay, so we can't do more. And I don't even believe we're done. But everything else is set. So, we'll actually go to Mana. Oh my god. Seriously. I want to get to Mana and... Worse is this is not even close to the last one. There we go. And I just want to show HK's new stats. Oh my god, I'm getting caught on the walls. Okay. Well, I might as well do some leveling for these characters. The only one I don't need to do for that for is Zobar. Sadly, Zobar at this point is pretty much not great. So, look at the decks. Look at it. No one's getting close to HK's decks. And may I add, he's got all this gear. His stats are absurd. Uh, and yet, yeah. actually, does it show? No, it doesn't. It doesn't show that you can. But. Quickly. Boost up those. Force immunity, because that's useful. Attributes, because you're going to need that. Master speed. Actually, we'll go through Manon without any part members because I don't believe we need any part members. So we can just head down, get through. And of course, because we are returning. 
Yeah, Manon's the only place you will have to pay another fee. But we can just ignore that. Because we're going to need money. We're going to need money. Of course. Of course, I am going to try and get everyone leveled up before anything. So, this last episode is literally going to be a level up bonanza. Uh, Pair, tree injury. And feet. Attributes, physical prowess. Yeah, Carf, who is, I believe, our second best. Marksman isn't even close. resistance awareness feet flurry stasis field crease wisp force immunity Merciful. And we will rush over. If you remember when we last went down here. Did you ever think about joining? That was nearly five years ago. I guess. Do you not? There was something. So you're saying? We did not abandon you. Reven you are? Yeah, right. And every single one of them would have been speaking Mandalorian. Well, that's an interesting talk. Uh, that's more important for the second game. Because that actually goes in into deals this game doesn't. But that's not here or there. We're here for the more important one. This game. Oh, I hate this. And there's the machine. Hurry up. Slowly make our way over. Access fuel pre tank pressure controls. I believe it's filled the injector. No, it's not. Dump the injector. It's filled the container. Transfer container to injector. Uh, dump injector pod. Transfer. 
fill container, transfer, and this. How we do this? The giant Faraxa has changed where it is. I cannot wait till we're done. Sea Beast seems at peace. Now that the Cold to Harvesting Machine is destroyed, the Great Faraxan shows no signs of hostility. It allows you to pass. It makes me wonder how did Revan and Malik get this? This is like the only one that I don't get how they got. The others I can see, I question, but it would not be as big as this. Come on. The second game makes these much more bearable. We only have one more place to go. Corbin. Now let's return to the surface. So, how's your guys' day? Because mine is horrible, apparently. Go. We're not even moving as fast as when we check. And you and people wonder why Manon sucks. Granted, it's the Babel of Taris or this is worse, because Taris goes on for so long. Granted, if I had to pick between the Paragus mine, mining facility and Taris, I would pick Taris over and over. Oh, at least Taris, you are being like you're doing something, something, and it changes things. Paragus, it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't. Now normally, after you've done that, Darf Bandon would appear, but we've already killed him. So no one appears. It's weird. Also, this guy's disappeared. It's implied they either went to the service or Darf Bandon killed him. Okay. Of course, you can probably tell what's going to happen. We're going to jail. You've returned. I was beginning to fear that you too might have been lost. Did you find out what had happened? I just there? left. So good when the same. Go to the station. Killed everyone and the mercenaries we sent later. That something was down. It's horrible. The entire operation wasted by a disaster we could never in a thousand years have foreseen. What has happened to the facility itself? A few scientists. Well, that's good to know. Good to know indeed. But what has happened to the facility? Was it damaged? No, that is terrible. That will set our work back years. It may even cost us the war. While I am glad that you were able to solve our problems, the cost may have ended up being much too high. But you have done your job and helped us in our time of need. Oh, and did you end up finding your star map? As you can see, by helping us, you helped yourself. Perhaps we can work together again in the future. I will say, I might as well talk about that. About one thing. 
uh, the Sundry Shell. I failed it in this run. It's not too bad, so we don't need to worry too much. It's just that Sunray is what's found guilty. Now we get ambushed. Very well. I will come peacefully. And we got another goddamn trial. Thankfully, this one's easy. Explosions were at the recent station, both of governments set up there. The giant, the machinery, had woken up a giant, Farax the Shark. I don't get this! I never said anything about killing it! I didn't kill the shark. And can we get off? Basically, Scott Free. Let's return to Evan Hawk. And before we leave Manon, there is one thing we have to do. One big thing. And that Well, there's two big things. First is change uh oh yeah one of them has this has that bonder Bondar. Sigil. There we go. But the other thing is to do this effectively. 
We're going to save. And this is not the end of the episode. I'll save it in this one. Just in case I mess up with Juhani. For her quest. I don't believe I can do her thing. But. Oh, I thought we couldn't. Oh, we can go. I thought this was the point where that we disappears with the man. But if we go. What happened? What's going on? Sith interdictor ship. They must have been waiting for us on the hyperspace route. We're caught in their tractor beam. Do you recognize the ship? It's the Leviathan. Saul Karath's vessel. My old mentor. Admiral Kareth taught me everything I know about being a soldier. He was a legend in the Republic fleet, and a hero to me, until he betrayed us. When the Sith attacked my homeworld, the Leviathan, which is Saul Kareth's flagship, was at the head of the fleet. My family was destroyed that day, and my wife died in the Sith bombardment. Don't do anything you'll regret, Karth. I'm not gonna do anything stupid. I mean, I won't throw our lives away in some mad quest for vengeance, but if I get a chance to kill Saul during our escape, nobody better get in my way. Talk of an escape is somewhat premature, don't you think? We don't even have a plan to get out of this mess yet. And I'll admit, it won't be easy. Saul's no fool, and he won't underestimate us either. You can count on plenty of guards watching every move we make. Maybe Admiral Karath doesn't know how many of us there are on board. We all have special talents. Talents we could exploit so that one of us could stage a rescue. We just have to figure out who has the best chance to avoid capture so they can come and rescue us later. It's a long shot, but it's our only hope. Don't worry, I can get away from Admiral Carr's guards. The Admiral will be watching the three of us far too closely for any plot involving you, me, or Carth to succeed. It's going to be up to one of the others to get us out of this. Well, if we're gonna pick someone to save our skins, we better do it quick. In another minute, we're gonna have Sith troops marching up our loading ramp. So, we could choose almost everyone. We cannot choose this option. Is that wise? We need someone inconspicuous for this task, and Wookiees tend to draw a lot of attention, especially from arresting troops. Maybe you should go with someone else. Yeah, we can't choose all, but I wish. I wish we could, but this is actually where we're going to change. Now, for this episode, we are going to pick Juhani. However, the same day this goes up, I don't know when this is, every other option will be picked. We'll hear the between and before going again and after the next big scene. So, let's pick Juhani. You speak the truth. I alone of all the group might be able to remain hidden if the Sith search the ship. I could wait until the guards have completed their search, then come to rescue you. We'll try it your way, Juhani. The force before you. Hold on, they're dragging us into the docking bridge. Yeah, this is gonna be how episode goes. Bastila, Karth, and the crew have been taken prisoner as you ordered, Commander. Excellent. Have you searched the ship thoroughly? Admiral Karath warned me to be on alert for any kind of treachery. We searched the ship from top to bottom. Somebody would have had to be invisible not to find them in there. Well done. 
Return to your post and I'll tell the Admiral of this. Karth, it has been far too long since we last spoke. I see the recent months have not been kind in your case. I barely recognized you. But I recognize you, Saul. I see your face every night, even as I promise myself I will kill you for what you did to my home world. Did you learn nothing in your time under me? As a soldier, you should understand that casualties were unavoidable. This was an act of war. It was a cowardly act of betrayal. Your fleet bombed a civilian target into oblivion without warning or provocation, and the blood of those innocent people is on your hands. In war, even the innocent must die. The Sith would not accept me until I proved I had truly turned my back on the Republic by bombing the planet. My wife died in that attack, Saul. And for that, I swear I'll kill you. You used to be a man of action, not of empty words. Cling to your lust for revenge if you must, but spare me your tired threats. I've heard them all before. You're an insignificant part of these events anyway. Lord Malak is far more interested in your Jedi companions. He has great plans for them. We will never serve Malak or the Dark Side. The Sith will be destroyed, Admiral Carath, as will you if you don't turn away from this path. Your words are brave, Bastila, but the lure of the dark side is hard to resist. Or so I've been told. I wonder if your companion is as devoted to the light as you are. You're wasting your time, Saul. I'll never betray you, Jedi. You're defiant. I'm certain Malak will find your loyalty to the Jedi amusing. The Dark Lord would probably reward me if I just killed you once and for all, but he may want to question you given the trouble you've caused him, and the history between you. Interesting. History? What are you talking about? You mean, oh, this can't be true, can it? You really don't know what's going on here, do you? Well, I won't be the one to deprive Malik of the pleasure of telling you himself. The Dark Lord will no doubt torture you for information and for his own twisted pleasure. Eventually, you will tell him everything. The Sith can be very persuasive. However, Lord Malak is in another sector. It may be some time before he arrives, so I suppose I will have to fill in for him until then. Activate the torture fields. Ah! Enough. I don't want them to pass out before I question them. Malak will appreciate any information I can give him when he arrives. Don't waste your breath, Saul. We won't answer any of your questions. I'm sure you won't. However, we both know your friend's loyalties have proven in the past to be somewhat flexible. My loyalty is as true as Carf's. It is time to put your loyalty to the test. I doubt torturing you will gain me your true cooperation. Your will is too strong to be broken that way. However, even the strongest of heroes has trouble watching those they care about suffering. The interrogation will begin now. Each time you refuse to answer or give me a false answer, Karth will suffer. I will not betray Vegeta, even to save Karth. My pain is meaningless. Tell him nothing. I tire of these games. Now I want answers. On what planet is the Jedi Academy at which you were trained? Alderaan. Is on Alderaan. Alderaan is nothing but a planet of artisans and philosophers. There is no training academy there. You must think this is a game. Very well, this is the price of your resistance. Ah! Enough! You see what happens when you try to defy me. This first question was a test. Obviously, Malak knew the academy was on Dantooine, and it has since been destroyed by our fleet. Dantooine is an empty graveyard now. Nothing is there but a smoking ruin and the charred remains of your former masters. No. You're lying. It isn't true! It doesn't matter whether you believe me or not. The fact remains that the Jedi on Dantooine have been eradicated, along with any hope of someone coming to rescue you. Now, tell me your mission. How were the Jedi planning on using you to stop Lord Malak and our Sith Armada? We have been sent to assassinate. Lord Malak. Do you take me for a fool? The Jedi are not assassins. They would never devise such a plan. Perhaps you need a reminder of the consequences of refusing to cooperate. Oh, oh, ah! Listen, can you not hear him suffering? You can spare him further pain by simply answering my questions. Now I will ask again, on what mission did the Jedi Council send you?
You're a second evil man, Saul Kara. Perhaps another lesson is in order. No! Ah, ah, no! I beg you! Mercy! No! I am surprised he did not pass out sooner. Rarely have I seen someone withstand such punishment and remain conscious. I see I'm wasting my time here. When Malak arrives, you will learn my interrogation techniques are considered merciful among the Sith. I will leave you here in your cell with a small taste of the horrors you will suffer when Lord Malak arrives. Ah! If you're male, Basil is tortured. Too quickly. You might not be fully recovered yet. Admiral Karath had his guards continue to torture you even after you passed out. They tortured all of us, though you got the worst of it by far. Saul wanted them to make us suffer. He's become some sort of sadistic monster. The dark side has perverted him, Karth. Once you start down the tainted path, it leads you ever further into the depths of evil. I fear he is forever lost. No one's without hope of redemption, Basil. Yes. I suppose you're correct. Sometimes it's easy to lose sight of that hope in the face of such unbridled cruelty. But you speak the truth. I suppose I'm taking the news of Dantooine's destruction quite hard. First Taras, now the Academy. Is there no end to the killing? I know. It's hard to believe they're all gone. I'd like to believe that Saul was lying to us. But even as he said the words, I knew they were true. The Academy is gone. We should have felt a disturbance in the Force when the attack came. The fact that we did not is a bad sign. I fear the dark side is growing stronger. Casting shadows our vision cannot pierce. I can only hope that some of the Jedi escaped. Rook, Endar, Saar. I cannot imagine all of them being gone. In any case, we've lost our one place of refuge in the galaxy. None of this will matter if we don't get out of this prison before Saul gets back. Where is Saul Karif now? Saul mentioned that Lord Malak was on his way. I think the Admiral left to prepare for his arrival and to report the results of our interrogation. It is fortunate you were able to resist the Admiral's questioning. The fate of the galaxy could be changed by revealing the slightest piece of vital information. I, uh, I have to confess something. There was a, there was a moment, just a moment, when part of me was hoping that you would tell him what he wanted to know, just to make the horrible pain stop. Saw so with have tortures, no matter what. I told them. I've known Admiral Kareth a long time, and I think you're right. The interrogation was a sham. Saul was toying with us. He didn't care what we told him. I think it was just an excuse to torture us before Malak arrived. Did you feel that? A disturbance in the Force. The Admiral has sent his message. The Dark Lord knows we're here now. Malak is coming. Well, then we better hope Juhani busts us out of here before he arrives. Huh. <sighs> that line. Be seen. Oh. That line is the only line that's changed. Changed. You in that scene. You will fall! Ah. <laughs> Juhani is the only character to keep her equipment other than HK and I believe T3. She's the only human character that gets this. Gets a streaming. Normally, I would not go through all this. <laughs> However, I might as well. But for showing off the other characters, I will only be showing off how to get everyone free. Nothing more. Nothing less. But with Juhani, we'll show everyone. Everything. Up until a point. And I'll say, yeah, no. Who are you? You're a smuggler. And if we break him open... The icebreaker is only useful here. But I can show it. I believe in the original, this was something that didn't work correctly. The icebreaker did, but 
Everything else didn't. Release the cell doors. Anything else? And I believe we only get it for this. So, let's bring this open. We get some Pizzat cards, a Pizzat deck, which is our only time. To get a free Pizzat deck. We open the door. We open this door. We open this door. We open this. We open this. Very useful. <laughs> As we go up here, we get extra guard. No matter if you're trying to go stealthy, you'll be uncloaked. It's dumb. Or a joke. That droid will be more useful in T3 in HK's room. But we want all these parts because these will be useful. Medical supplies. This is empty, because that's for Candorous. We'll get to them later. And if we use this, unlock. So well you. done, Juhani. In freeing us from the cell, you have proven yourself truly worthy of the title of Jedi. Now, if I remember the layout of the ship. Our equipment should be in a storage chamber just through the north doors. After we grab our stuff, we need to get to the main bridge controls. The bridge is the only place that we can open the docking gates of the hangar where they've got the Ebon Hawk. We have to open those gates before we can fly out of here. We better get moving. I can feel the darkness of Malak's presence approaching, and I don't want to be here when he arrives. None of us is a match for the Sith Lord. And this is where we're going to end this episode. For me, I'll be recording all the other paths. For you guys, we'll be back here and we'll be storming the Leviathan. See you guys then. Xenon and Zuma, signing out. <laughs>